love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. We've got Drew Zimmerman. He's the CEO of Stallion Discoveries. He's going to give the audience an update here on the non-brokered private placement. Uh, for four bill for four million dollars, he's going to give us an update on where we are going to be strategically allocating that capital, and uh, updating the audience on the exciting uh, progress that is going to be made uh, on the uh, discoveries and survey work that's being done on their large land packages. Drew, welcome to the channel, and please provide us uh, your update. Yeah, thank you, Ryan, and uh, a great overview. And yeah, in incredibly happy to have closed a. Uh, Four million private placement, um, you know, especially with the markets being as tumultuous as as, as they have, have become in the last uh, week or so here, you know, having that money in the bank and, uh, you know, in our hands, ready to go out and, and do the work that we want to do, not only in the coming months, but for the rest of the year goes goes a long way. And it really, you know, assures us that we're able to, to set the plans that we want to set and, and go out there and get to work like we said we were going to. So. With that, we we did we we kicked off uh, a geophysics survey. We have a helicopter in the air as as we speak. It's been going for uh, almost uh, two weeks now, I guess. Um, they've been covering a lot of ground. Uh, again, we have a big package up there, almost 800 square kilometers. So this uh, helicopter's got to fly over 5,000 kilometers of of survey lines, um, and and it takes some time. You know, they have to fly it low. They they fly it carefully. Um, and, and again, it's going to be a pretty exciting survey to have done, but we're really excited as, as it is the first step. It's the step that a lot of companies uh, in the region have taken and, and utilized to really have you know, a good understanding and to be able to build on and, and go out and find the discoveries that they, they did. So again, we're just trying to uh, follow the roadmap that they've set for us and, and excited to be getting the results from this first survey. Yeah, fantastic. And, you know, as I was reviewing the project, it kind of came to my mind. I wanted to ask you about, I, I know the size and the magnitude of these projects are enormous, but is there any pre-planning that goes into really the strategy over uh, the survey itself? And during the survey, how much communication is happening? Do they just go out there and conduct the surveys? It's something that you guys put in motion, or are they constantly communicating to you guys? And, and, and then you guys can extrapolate that data after, Drew. Yeah, um, to, to start with, again, it, it, it was a lot of uh, pre-planning and, and getting things set. So, you know, we went through, there are uh, multiple different types of geophysics surveys that can be done. But again, we're not trying to recreate the exploration wheel in the Athabasca Basin. You know, there's been some great discoveries in the last decade alone in the Western Athabasca where we have a very big footprint. Uh, so we're doing this same survey that's given those companies, you know, the most information or one of the surveys that's given them the most information right from the get-go. Um, so we're using the same survey that, that Fission Uranium used and F3 Uranium used as well. Um, so again, not trying to recreate anything, just saying if this worked well for you, we're going to follow your roadmap. Um, so the survey that we're doing now, the, the VTAM will give us the conductors. So the conductors tend to be the roadmap up in that area. Um, and again, a, a great starting point from being able to cover such a, a large land package and and really be able to hone in on some more specific targets is what we're looking to accomplish with this survey. Sure. And then to the second part of your question, um, yeah, the I mean, there's a whole crew out there that's that's working every day, um, you know, and they are constantly contacting us with with updates and what they're doing. We did also engage uh, Condor Consulting. They uh, are our QAQC, so they're making sure that as that data that comes in every day, you know, the data that they're getting is good data, correct data, so that it all comes into a complete survey and gives us the most information that we can get from it. And, and again, Condor Consulting is uh, an absolute benchmark of, of that type of work that they, they do in the basin. We'll, we'll look to engage with them for interpreting the results as well. They're just absolute yeah. specialists uh, in that space of geophysics. So uh, it's, it's a great to, to have one, a, a great uh, company like Geotech to actually do the work uh, and again, a, a, another good company in Condor Consulting to make sure that work is getting done properly and there's no uh, little mishaps here and there. And, and they do. They, they ask Geotech to you know, reply some lines when some of the data isn't coming through as it should. Uh, but again, together, that's going to give us the best survey at, at the end of this that we can possibly get. So pretty excited about that. 
Yeah, excellent. So, you know, Drew, I guess, I guess when I set back the bear case on stallion discoveries is to suggest that, and I know this is part of your your kind of your strategic approach is to neighbor with existing producers in these prolific regions. You mentioned the Athabasca. But the bear case is to suggest, okay, well, just because your neighbors are producing, does that mean that you're gonna gonna show good results? And I guess the follow on to that question is, if you do end up finding some some very promising, you know, inferred results there, does that not kind of accelerate the value for stallion discoveries? Now going back and saying, look, I told you so, we're in this prolific, this is kind of what we what we expected to happen in the first place. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, exploration is always uh, a risky endeavor. It's it's going into the unknown to try and find something. Um, and we think we have a good roadmap that allows us to have the highest chance of success is really all that we can ask for in this game. So as you say, we, we neighbor with uh, some absolute world-class deposits and discoveries uh, across all of our assets uh, because we do think that's one of the key things is if you want to find something, one of the highest probabilities that you can give yourself is to be right next door to something that's already found. Uh, and then again, you, you start to do the work and, and we start with very underexplored, large underexplored projects so that we're able to go out and do you know, a big survey like this and focus in on the key target areas of those large projects that, you know, give us the most uh, resemblance to other targets that other companies have found, uh, what's working for them, where they found their target. And, you know, we think that alone creates a lot of value as we go through this exploration process because we're, we're de-risking, you know, this large unknown into, into some known targets. And then as we work those targets more and eventually going towards a what is hopefully a discovery drill hole, you know, that's where you can get a significant amount of re-rate. But again, we like to create value right from underexplored to what is yeah. hopefully a discovery uh, hole. So that's again, it's it is it is a risky business and an unknown business, uh, but we are in it because the potential of finding something and finding something big is is always there. Um, and when you do that, it can be incredibly rewarding. And that is what we go after in this business. So not only finding the you know critical minerals in the case of uranium that you know we think the world economy needs for a, a, a cleaner, Absolutely. greener future, but uh, you know, it can be incredibly rewarding for all the stakeholders of Stallion Discoveries as well. Uh, just it makes sense to me. It would make sense that if you made this discovery and you know there was really good inferred results from the survey work, but you were in the middle of nowhere, you know, it would still be a prove it story. But but going through this rigor with the with the known, I mean, there's 60 years of uranium production up in the Athabasca. You know, if you guys have got some good results that are turned back, I I, I could see no more uh, bullish news for you guys. And I, I think you you guys would chalk that up as a as a real success. The the, the properties as large and prolific as they are. How do you go about strategically looking at, and I know you had mentioned, you know, it's not, you know, the very uh, experienced survey uh, crew that you've hired, but how rigid is the survey? Do you have the opportunity to flex and, and how much, um, you know, how much flexibility do you have and to put more emphasis on some of the areas or is it just go out there, find the data, and, and then you guys can strategize at a later date. Can you kind of talk about the potential for flexibility in, in where you kind of go out there on an initial shot and then you can flex from there? Or is it just go get the data, turn it back and then and then uh, review the data once it's presented? Yeah, we took the approach to go out there and get the data. So we're not okay. flying you know, what we think is the most prospective area, we were flying every square foot of property that we picked up in the Athabasca Basin. So that allows us to be incredibly pragmatic when we get the data back is yeah. we're not guessing where we think our next target area is. We've covered our entire property. So we know where the key targets are, uh, yeah. what's giving us similarities to other uh, targets that have been found in the area. Uh, and, and that really was the best approach we think we could take because again, when when you are starting with an underexplored project, you don't know where those key areas are or, or what lies uh, out of the periphery of what's been explored. So 
that's where we will go and say, you know, these are our target yeah. areas and do another more advanced, uh, more localized geophysics survey, uh, likely on the ground. Uh, but that will be something that will come in the summer. But again, being able to have the targets that we develop from this survey, um, and again, on a large land package like we have, we do uh, assume there will be several targets to go after. And and where it gets a little tougher on our end then is prior, prioritizing those targets. But again, that's a very good problem to have because again, if we can align our targets with what has worked in the basin in the past, we've seen some absolutely incredible results that have come out of, out of those targets. Uh, and we want to align ourselves with, with that same sort of, uh, exploration and discovery hole that they have. So uh, right. pretty exciting, even just from the results of this survey. Uh, and then it will just continue to build from there as, as we do more work. Okay. And too, too premature to talk about any results that have been turned out thus far. You want to keep that under your hat, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll be compiling everything together. Uh, we've still got, again, it, it is an incredible amount of flying. So We'll have yeah. uh, a helicopter or maybe even two in the air uh, for the next few weeks. Uh, and then there will be some uh, time to, to clean up and interpret the data. Um, so it will be a little bit of time left yet. But uh, when we put the results out, uh, it'll be a, an exciting release and it'll hopefully show uh, some, some pretty exciting targets to go after. And for the viewing audience, Drew, do you have a timeline that you're looking maybe for conclusion of, of this survey? I, again, there's a, a few things in motion there. One with with weather, uh, you never know. Sometimes you know a bad a bad week can be lost uh, with the helicopter. They have to fly very low to the ground, so they have to have visual uh, ability to be able to fly, and right. you know that can delay things. And then there's also just the amount of time it takes to you know fully digitize all the data and, and work it through a few different models and, and really interpret it and understand it uh, as best we can. Um, so that'll take some time, but uh, yeah, we're hoping over the next uh, couple of months we'll be putting putting out a, a release with all the findings that we get from this. Fantastic. Thank you for that color, Drew. And right now, uh, just for my my knowledge and for the viewing audience, is the focus right now on Athabasca or are you doing any anything here in the States with regard to your Horse Heaven and uh, Richmond Mountain projects? Yeah, Richmond Mountain, uh, we're continuing to look at, we'll be doing a geophysics uh, study there. Uh, a lot more snow down there, again, so some weather issues than they would normally ever see with some of the storms that have been uh, hitting that area and, and just the West Coast in general. Um, so we're looking at the potential of, of when is the best time to, to do these surveys. Again, uh, they can have some seasonality to them. So we want to get a, a good survey, the best survey done that we can. Yeah. Um, and in, in Idaho, we're continuing to work uh, to complete our, our drill permit. Uh, we're working with the U.S. Forest Service on that, um, looking to get that drill permit uh, completed. And we'll be able to, to have that in hand and be able to make some decisions going forward there. So um, moving those along um, as well as we sort of gear up for what we're calling some some secondary target uh, exploration work on on Idaho as well. Um, again, we're waiting for that uh, drill permit uh, on our on our main target zone, the Golden Gate Fault Zone. Um, but again, looking at uh, you know Antimony Ridge as a secondary target there, another critical mineral with no production in the United States. Um, so looking at how we further uh, you know line up our understanding of of what's going on with that target as well. So that'll right. be more more f field work. Um, nothing as big as drilling, but uh, yeah. So still moving our projects along in the United States. Uh, but definitely our, our focus is in the Athabasca right now. Um, but again, yep. yeah, bringing all the projects along at the same time. Great, Drew. And for the Athabasca project, just so I'm clear, you had said that the that the land package that you guys had acquired is, is pretty much undis undiscovered, unexplored. Um, is there any historical uh, survey work that you guys were able to take into consideration? Or is this work that you're doing somewhat novel in nature? No, uh, a lot of it did have, uh, you know, there's Saskatchewan wide, so regional surveys that have been done um, that we've utilized and we put into our models and we'll be able to layer on uh, this new survey. Yeah. Um, and in the east, in the east, we do have uh, three little smaller projects there. Uh, those projects definitely have more historical work and, and we have been um, compiling that to, as well yeah. to understand, you know, everything that has been done. 
um, again, it's always, you know, trying to make sure we can find as much of those historical records as possible and then putting it into uh, the models that we have to be able to fully understand that. So that is work that's ongoing as well. Uh, but it's always been our idea that the survey we're doing now will just complement anything that we're putting together uh, while the survey is going on. So at the completion, we have all the historical known data as well as layering on uh, a new uh, geophysical survey to really give us the best idea of, of what we're looking at. Fantastic. You know, Drew, I, I think that's that's everything I have really on the survey side, but I absolutely want to make sure that we haven't we haven't missed anything on the survey topic. And then I just want to ask you a few more broader questions about the general commodities market. Um, it's on fire. I mean, we've got gold that's staring down 2000 an ounce. Some discussions about if it does that, it could break into a multi-year uh, type of commodities run. And, and uranium 2023 projections at $71 a pound are, are some of the estimates here. So, you know, give you the opportunity to, to kind of make sure that our investor opportunity is our investor audience is up to speed on the survey work. But certainly I'd love to get your twist on, you know, volatility in the stock market is really putting a lot of emphasis on the commodities market in general. So I'd love to get your insights on that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm very happy to see where the gold market has has gone to um, in the last time. I mean, it's it's hap happened very Finally. quickly uh, as well. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think that's, you know, the the nature of, of the gold market. Uh, when you have this, you know, risk and, and unease and uncertainty of where do I put my money? How do I pro protect my money? I mean, we used to think that, you know, putting it in a checking account and a bank account was, you know, absolutely safe. And I think the, the government in the U.S. has has made that so. Uh, but there was a whole weekend there where there was a lot of people wondering if they were going to get back some of their checking account yeah. balances. So yeah. in that environment, I mean, you've seen a lot of money flow out of the, the smaller banks into the bigger banks. Uh, when there's just that sort of risk sentiment, you do see gold tend to be doing better. And uh, I mean, until today, the, the sort of contagion has moved towards uh, Credit Suisse as well. But yeah. Uh, in that environment, you really saw the U.S. dollar losing some of its edge as well with the U.S. dollar coming back off. And, and mm -hmm. I always remind people that, you know, I like to say that the commodity bull market started in 2021, this most recent one, everywhere except the United States. And that's because the U.S. dollar just ripped everybody's face off last year. And in yeah. U.S. dollar terms, commodities didn't do all that well. But in other currencies, commodities did much, much better throughout that year. So. I think we get uh, back to that overall sentiment where this commodity market that that did start a little while ago continues on and it just does so uh, not facing such a strong U.S. dollar and potentially even a U.S. dollar that continues to back off if the Fed is done raising rates and, yeah. and potentially has to lower rates late, later this year. So um, overall, I think you know we're in a great position in, in two great resource sectors. Um, as you mentioned, the outlook for the uranium market to, again still taking a little time and, and not gaining in price just yet, but we do think it's there. You know, later out in the cycle, the contracting cycle that's happening right now, prices are going up. We do see again week in week out very positive news for the uranium sector with more reactors being planned, more reactors yep. being built more reactors being turned back on. So the demand is is there. And then, of course, the, the big risk out there right now is will Europe, will the United States start to ban uh, uranium that comes from Russia or through Russia, which would be the yes. Kazakhstan uranium, which is almost half of half the global production. So that would be a pretty significant event. But again, as we've seen with a lot of commodity markets, it's about nationalizing the commodities that you need. So, you know, we went from a very global economy of, you know, you get uh, this commodity from that country, that commodity from this country. Yes. Now it's, do I have at least, you know, uh, enough to give, get by on a day to day basis from my own country? Do I have my own copper? Do I have my own gold? Do I have my own uranium? Um, so I think that's where you see, especially, you know, in North America, us uh, Canadians and Americans are, are, very good friends still and, and maybe even group Mexico into that. But in North America, can we create uh, supply chains that they give us everything that we need? And I think that needs to be a focus. And, and that's where I think for uranium, the Athabasca Basin, you know, besides that point is the best place to look for uranium in the world. Uh, but especially because of that it just becomes that much more important. 
Yeah, and just to circle back for what it could mean for stallion discoveries, and you know, I'd love to get your opinion on this. Being being the top guy, I mean, does that does that add any added pressure for stallion discoveries? Is there any type of urgency around this, or are you satisfied with the pace and you know want to see these survey results come back and turn back? I mean, you know, we're 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 stepping into a very potentially you know, very favorable commodities market. Do you feel any of that pressure to move these projects along quicker or are you satisfied with the pace, Drew? Yeah, I mean, we're always trying to move as quickly as we can, but we do allow that pace to get dictated by the market. So, you know, if the market is really rewarding good exploration and yeah. and really, you know, wanting more exploration companies to go out there and do more work, you know, we, we get a sense of that in the market. And again, with this uncertainty, uh, you know, it is, you know, risk capital that investors are putting out to exploration companies. So when risk capital gets drawn in a little bit, a little closer to the chest, then, you know, it's a little less urgent for us to go out there and do as much work as absolutely possible. But as these markets, you know, evolve and change, you know, we have the optionality at, at Stallion Discoveries. We've got, you know, two gold assets that we think are absolutely tremendous. And when that market is right, we think we'll provide a ton of value for our shareholders. But we also see right now the work that we're doing in the Athabasca Basin as you know our highest potential right now. It's the market that's telling us right now to to go out there and do the most work. So we're listening to those cues, and and again, I don't necessarily feel the pressure of that. I I, I see the opportunity in letting the market sort of tell me where I need to put our efforts, where uh, we need to really focus on uh, the most. So it's exciting to be in both of those sectors because. Yeah, I do think we are coming into a year where the market will tell us to to work faster on both sectors, and and I don't mind doing that. I don't mind the long days that uh, keeps me busy and keeps me out of trouble. Yeah, well said, Drew. Um, we'll we'll wind it down here. Give you the last word here and make sure that the uh, investor community is all up to date uh, and up to speed on the progress that you guys are making. And and congratulations again on the private placement. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, I really appreciate it. Really appreciate uh, the support from our shareholders uh, to be able to do this. Uh, we think it's important work, and especially with the uranium uh, projects that we're kicking off uh, to work on now. You know, just really excited to see what we're going to be able to do there. Uh, we think it's an opportunity not only for uh, the country, but really for uh, you know the the world as as we try and transition to more of a a uh, nuclear friendly low carbon uh, energy fuel source that uh, you know uranium's going to have a key part to play in that and and we want to be a big part of that so it's going to be uh, exciting in the in the times ahead fantastic drew on behalf of the audience thank you so much for the updates and uh, we will be standing by uh, on the uh, on the results as those come in uh, eagerly awaiting those results again congratulations and uh, we'll look to speak to you soon thank you drew Absolutely. Look forward to uh, being back and uh, sharing those results with you, Ryan. You got it. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Take it easy.